Mrs. Ladies and gentlemen. Ah! <laughs> I'm very nervous. Um, we're celebrating the Prince's trust. We're celebrating talent, especially young talent. We are also celebrating the 21st birthday of London Weekend Television. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you Steve Coogan. Your Royal Highnesses, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as I'm sure you're quite aware, my name is uh, Bond, James Bond. And, uh, no, it's not my name's Bond, James Bond. No, no my name's Bond. No, my name's Bond, and I'll prove it to you. No, I, I'm having a Bond attack here, I'm sorry. <laughs> But the thing about James Bond films is you always have this archetypal Scandinavian arch enemy in it. Ah, Mr. Bond, we meet again. Sit down. Have some Dom Perignon, 1965. This guy's tried to shoot him on several occasions. He sits down and has a drink. Why doesn't he simply say, Ah, Ernest Stavros Blofeld. We meet again. <laughs> because the film's far too short, you see. But I think an excellent arch enemy for James Bond would be Woody Allen. Woody Allen. Why not? It's different. So, Woody, you plan to take over the world, eh? Yeah, it's something I've always wanted to do, you know, it's an ambition I've always had. It's um, be really good about it. Um, you know, I started small with a health food store in Greenwich Village and sort of developed, and now it's at a really grand stage. I'm sort of hoping to take over them. I have a vision of the world all eating quiche simultaneously. It's, uh, it's crazy, I know, but most megalomaniacs are. I know. You seem a little nervous. Nervous. I get labor pains when my wife's pregnant. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. And American cop series are no different. They always have this antagonistic relationship between the police commissioner and the, the guys on the case. Come on, boss. Al Pacino, usually. Come on, boss. All I need is 24 hours to solve this case. I'm just going to nail this guy, okay? That's all I need. Look, you, you wrapped up two police cars, you got a mare on my back, and parking violations, you're off this case. Come on, boss. All I need is 24 hours. That's all I need, okay? Okay, 24 hours. But you screw up, I'm going to kick your ass so hard you're going to wish you'd never been born. Why? Why can't they have someone like, um... A more sort of tactful approach, perhaps played by Larry Hackman as the police commissioner. You know? I'll tell you, boy, if you don't get this case solved by five o'clock, I'm just going to get something to do it real good. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to bring him right now. Sly, are you there, Sly? Yes, yeah, sure. yo, what do you want me to do? Blow him away, go to bed? Sly, your acting is real terrible. I'm going to have to bring my acting coach. Michael, are you there? Yes, do you want me to help you? Yes. I want you to tell him how to act real good. Okay, now Sylvester, if you're going to act, you don't need to shout all the time. I don't need acting lessons. <laughs> you can speak quietly, quietly like this, and then for no apparent reason you can get really, really loud. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is not Michael Kane. It's Steve Coogan. Thank you very much for listening. Michael Thank you, Mum and all the family. Every once in a while, there arrives on the pop scene a group so multi-talented, so charismatic, so dynamic, so musically inventive that they change the face of pop forever. <laughs> well, let's hope we see one later tonight. Um, the next group... Our next group have tried several names in their quest, a elusive quest for fame. Originally, they were the Three Wets. Then they became the fabulous Wet Brothers. <laughs> Gary, Steve, Ivan and Cliff. <laughs> for a short while, they became the Norman Mackintosh Novelty Accordion Band. <laughs> a song, a squeeze and a live anaconda. <laughs> for a very short while, they were the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, they remain for you. Wet, wet, wet! <laughs> 